Hello and welcome to Tensile Ground Coffee, a few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy it while having your coffee. Well, we're back in the office and we're going to start a new season called Ask Andrew. So you can write in with questions about ground engineering and uh, we'll try to answer them. And that's what Tensile's here for. We're here to help, here to answer your questions. So let's get straight into the first one. Uh, this one's from Sandy, Sandy Gravel, and she asks, what is a retaining wall? So that's a good fundamental uh, ground engineering question to start on. So let's get straight over to the flip chart, Brian, and let's uh, learn about what is a retaining wall. So it's a wall that retains something. That's what the name suggests. What does it retain or hold? It holds soil. Uh, so there are several situations where you might need a retaining wall. Uh, let's say a sloping ground, for example. So you've got a site you need to build something on there, a building or a road on sloping ground. That's not easy to do. We don't want a building at an angle like that. We want it to be built on horizontal ground. So you need to create horizontal ground uh, in order to begin construction. How do we do that? We cut and fill. So we cut there, that material comes out of there and if it's suitable it goes in there. A process called cut and fill to create a horizontal surface in sloping ground. Now you can leave these slopes at their angle of repose or a little bit flatter but if you want to maximize the space you can go right back to a vertical slope here and a vertical slope here. So now you've maximized the area that you can construct on but clearly this ground is unlikely to be able to to support itself without collapsing. That's where the retaining wall comes in. We need a structure here, something that will go in there that can support, hold or retain that soil so it doesn't collapse. Uh, another common example is constructing um, railways or highways and you need some grade separation, maybe for a junction. So you might have one road up here and you have another road down here. You need that grade separation. This can be, uh, this is often a soil here and then you'll need some sort of retaining wall again to support that ground because clearly it will not support itself. It will just collapse onto that road below. So, it can happen in this situation where you've got a parallel road or it can even be in a situation where this road is going in that direction and you want to construct a bridge over to the other side and the road continues over there. Again, these are retaining walls. They are abutment walls given a specific name in this case, but they're performing the same function of supporting the soil in here so it doesn't collapse into there. And, and another situation, a common situation where you need a retaining wall is if you want to construct a basement. That is often in a built up area. So you may have many buildings here and you want to construct a basement between these buildings here. You want the basement to be as big as possible to maximize the space but you're going to need, when you excavate out this material to create the basement, you are going to need a retaining wall in there and in there to support not only this ground to stop it collapsing, but it's even supporting these other buildings outside of here. So you definitely need a, a retaining wall there as well. So those are examples of where you need a retaining wall and what their purpose is. Let's just look a little bit at how, uh, how they work and how you design them. So you have some ground here. Then you want to create your vertical uh, cut, your vertical slope, and then you have the ground level down here. If you just left it like that, only something very strong like a rock will be able to support a vertical uh, slope like that. Soils are a granular material so they have a little bit of strength they can support a certain slope but when you get too steep that 
slope uh, is likely to collapse and that's what would happen here. So we need uh, some form of retaining wall here, some sort of structure. We'll get into the different types later. Maybe somebody will write in with a, with a question about types of retaining wall. Let's hope so. Uh, for the moment, we'll just stick to a generic retaining wall, some structure that is going to prevent the collapse of this soil down like that. So what it's actually doing to support the slope, it needs to apply a horizontal force to that soil so that the soil does not fall that way. So when you do a design, you need to know what is that horizontal pressure. Well, this all comes from the self weight of the soil. So as you go deeper down into a soil, the self weight uh, stresses become higher and higher because you've got more and more soil above you. So as you get down to here, you've got all that weight of soil above. That's the vertical stress, but you also get a horizontal stress that is usually some fraction of the vertical stress. And there are ways, there are earth pressure coefficients, they are called, there are ways of calculating what is the horizontal stress relative to the vertical stress. So because the vertical stress gets bigger as you go deeper down into the ground, also the horizontal stress gets bigger as you go deeper into the ground. So what the retaining wall needs to support is a horizontal pressure within the soil that is getting bigger as you go deeper down like that. So that is the horizontal stress that we call sigma uh, for normal stress and H or horizontal. So as I said this is normally some fraction of the vertical stress that you can calculate from earth pressure coefficients. Uh, typically around about half or a bit less when it's at rest. Maybe a bit more if you've, do, if you've done some compaction here and due to geological um, history it may be uh, quite a bit higher, maybe even higher than the vertical stress due to certain uh, geological uh, conditions but generally about half or a bit less than the vertical stress. So that is what your retaining wall needs to resist. Now, if you're designing for serviceability, uh, deformations, deflections, that sort of thing, then it's this at rest uh, earth pressure you should be looking at. But for ultimate limit state design, where we're checking that the wall will not fail, then we look at something slightly different. It's a limiting stress. So if this wall failed, it would move forward and this horizontal pressure would get less and less as the wall moves forward. Eventually you'll get to a limiting value. It's called the uh, active limit. It's when there's just enough horizontal pressure applied by the wall to support the weight of this soil here. Any less and the wall will collapse. So that's a bit less than this one. So that actually at the point of failure. So that is the, the active value, the active pressure. So we design the wall so it doesn't collapse uh, at, this, at this active pressure with a, a margin of safety on top. Um, so there are earth pressure coefficients in design codes and textbooks that uh, you can use for calculating this active pressure from the strength of the soil and its self weight density. So that's pretty much what a retaining wall has to do and it's a little bit of how we design it. Uh, what are some other things that we need to look out for during construction and in design? Well, imagine you designed the wall for this height here, but uh, during construction or even in service, somebody comes along and puts a big weight here, maybe a crane, or they may stockpile some material here. So imagine all that extra weight from stockpiling just behind this retaining wall. What effect is that going to have on the retaining wall? It's going to have a big effect. It's going to increase the vertical stresses a lot, which will increase the horizontal pressures, and that may be bigger than was allowed for in the design. So that's something to be careful of. Uh, if it's going to happen, it should be included in design. If it's not included in the design, it shouldn't happen during construction. Something else to look out for is groundwater. We haven't talked about that yet, but that has a big effect on retaining walls. Uh, if this soil is dry, it's relatively straightforward, but imagine groundwater accumulated here and all the soil in here filled with groundwater. 
now you've got the pressure of the water being applied here. And because it's a fluid, pressure is the same in all directions. We don't have this ratio between vertical and horizontal. So there could be an extra water pressure. And it could be bigger than the soil pressure. If that could happen, that needs to be allowed for in design. If it, if it has not been allowed for in design, it cannot be allowed to happen during service and during construction. So that's something to be very careful of. So you either need to allow for it in design or quite commonly a drainage will be installed near the bottom of the wall so that any water that accumulates will drain away. But you need to be careful that this doesn't get blocked. So during design you can put filters behind here to help prevent that but it needs regular maintenance to check that these drains aren't getting blocked because you can see what a big effect it would have if it did get blocked and we had all this extra pressure there. Okay, so that's a quick overview of what a retaining wall is. I hope that's answered your question, Sandy. That's all for this episode of Tents Out Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.